Hey fishing friends, JC here with Rad Reeling Fishing. This is the final episode of me catching eight snook on jigs. The second best night I've ever had of snook fishing in my life. At the end of this video, I am gonna run through some of the equipment, the line, the way I tie the jigs on, and how I work these jigs, and maybe some of the places that you're gonna find snook and you wanna fish with these jigs. Now, by no means am I a professional at jig snook fishing. I just started fishing with these things a little bit over a year ago, and I've caught quite a few snook. I will say, about 50% of the locations of where I've tried the jigs, I've either had hits or caught snook. So they don't always work, work every place where the snook would be. And I don't understand why, like one night I was up on the Skyway Bridge and I'm like, cool, this looks like a great place for there to be snook. And I started pounding down there with those, I had good current, started fishing with the jigs never had any hits. And this guy came up after I'd been fishing for like an hour. And he's like, yeah, you're in the right place. He said, I catch them up here on live beat all the time. He said, this place is loaded with snook, but I just couldn't get them to hit there. Now, maybe if I went back on a different moon phase or a different tide or something, I'd catch them there. But they just don't always work in every place that there's gonna be snook. And I don't understand why, but like I said, my experience has been about 50% of the time. But in the end of this video, because some of you guys are like, you're new to the channel and you're asking me what type of knots that I use to tie the jigs on and what size line and what size rod and how am I working the jigs. And so I'm gonna share some of that stuff at the end of this video, but you guys know that I don't share locations or cities. Like the majority of the time, um, I'm keeping that stuff secret. But I tell you the best way to find out what a good fishing, where a good fishing spot is, and that is get out there and just start fishing in different places. You're gonna run into anglers who are gonna share good fishing locations with you. I mean, at breakfast today, I was having uh, breakfast with a friend of mine. We finished breakfast, we're out standing outside, we're talking about fishing stories, and this guy pulls up in his car, he gets out of his car, and he's like, oh, you guys are telling fishing stories. I always wanna hear a good fishing story. We finished talking, and he started sharing some good locations for catching redfish in our area. So, you know, that's just kind of the way it happens. A lot of the great fishing spots that I have have come through just getting out there and going fishing and connecting with total strangers that will tell you where to go fish. They're local anglers and they're sharing this information with local people. Okay, so let's roll these clips, you guys. And at the end of this video, we are going to do this thing. We're going to go through the gear and all the good stuff. So thanks for listening to me ramble. My last jig of the colors that I like to use. This one's the multicolored one. And uh, yeah, Lord, I just pray I don't lose this jig. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Number seven. Here we go. Oh, I know they all look the same, you guys. But it sure is fun. <laughs> oh my god oh yeah good fish another good one oh number freaking seven are you kidding no way man oh god get a look at this guy there he is look at that number seven oh i think he's about the uh Smallest one of the smallest one of the night there. Still a good one. He's about 24, 25 inches. Oh, they're getting smaller. Ha! Ah, this one's gonna be easy to unhook, so let's get him out of here. Get him back in the water. Nice. Alright, let's get this guy back in the water. Whoa! It won't take much to revive this guy. Whew! Man. Oh. Number seven, man. Whew! Look at that. Nice snook, man. Nice snook. Nice. Very nice. He's getting pretty, pretty feisty there. I think he's ready to go. Let's see. You're free, buddy. You gotta go the other way, though. There you go. Nice. See you later, number seven. <laughs> Into the deeps he goes. Yep. There we go. Number seven. Woo, baby. 
Dang, double thumbs up. Dang, y'all. 12.35. Just release number seven. Let's keep fishing. Whew. All right, guys. Whoo. Number seven. Fishing with jigs. My best night of snook fishing ever with jigs. And uh, that was the smallest one of the night. He was probably 24, 25 inches. And uh, I think my biggest one of the night was probably 34. And, uh, man, I'd like to catch a big one here. I sure am having fun. Number seven. Are you kidding me? It's not even one o'clock yet. Whoo! Man, this is fun. Oh, we hit it right by the pilings. Right next to the pilings. Another good one. He's jumping. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. There we go. He's a fighter. He's another fighter. Seven thousand sold pen six thousand putting a whooping on him. Nice fish. Nice fish. Look at that. Oh yeah, another good one. It's number number eight. Nice, very nice. Whew. All right, let's get this guy up here. Less time we, less time we mess around with these guys, the uh, easier they are to revive. So let's get him out of here. Nice, freaking nice, man. God, love snook fishing. Number eight. Dang, boy. That's number eight. Come on. You gotta go the right way, though. There he goes. 12.59, guys. I just released that snook. Number eight. All right, so that was number eight. Whew. Nice, so I am convinced, you guys, that if I was bass fishing right now, I would be saying that the snook are staged in this area and they are feeding because they're getting ready to spawn during the months of June and July. We are in uh, almost mid-May and uh, the snooks are coming out of the creeks. They're in the intercoastal waterways and they're heading to the inlets and the beaches right now to uh, get hooked up to spawn. But uh, man, what a freaking night. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Eight snook on jigs. And I'm not finished, man. Let's get back out there and catch some more. <laughs> Until it's two in the morning, nobody on the road. Okay, for you folks that are new to the channel, this is my snook master rod. And uh, it actually, I put snook master on the rod with fingernail polish. And I did that many, many, many years ago. I wrote Snook Master on there. I got this rod at a garage sale. I kind of redid the whole thing about 30 years ago. It's an eight foot long and I think it's a fiberglass rod. It's really heavy, but it'll handle some big fish. And it's paired up with a Pen Pursuit 2 6,000 reel. Now this particular setup has 30 pound braid on it, but I'm seriously considering going straight to 50 pound braid all the time because I've lost some big fish using 30 pound braid, gotten broke off. Now, the other thing that I do is I, I'm leadering up with 80 pound test monofilament leader and I'm using a really, really long leader. I mean like an eight foot long monofilament leader because you know, snook hang around structure. It's not like I'm fishing in a place where there's a lot of open water, okay? Anytime that I'm jig fishing, I'm around a bridge or rocks or something where there's a lot of structure. So I'm leadered up with 80 pound test about eight feet long. And then of course with the jig, let's just kind of go through how I tie this jig on there. If, yeah, we use a, a, a loop knot and just take the monofilament line like this. This is the, the tag end and just loop it and put one square knot in it like that. And then take the, the tag end and stick it through the jig like that. And then flip that, that square knot over. See the jig? 
And now you're just gonna you're gonna tie a clinch knot. So you bring them together. Keep that that square knot loop in the middle. You create another loop, and we're just gonna do a a clinch knot. One, two, three. I do it four times around. Put a little bit of that on there. I grab the tag end in my mouth, and I pull that down tight, like that. Pull it down really tight. And then I cut the tag end off, but you can see what that does is it creates <laughs> fishing poles hanging down behind me. What it does is it creates a loop uh, for that knot to move back freely, and apparently that's supposed to give that jig more action in the water. So yeah, that's the way that the jig is tied on. Now I would say that I caught my personal best on a pink jig, but I would say that I do the majority of fishing in really, really heavy current areas, and I like to throw a two ounce jig, okay? And the way that I fish these jigs is there's like five or six different methods that people can use, and sometimes you'll just cast it out and you're just doing like a, a straight reel in, and then other times you're casting it out, you let it hit the bottom, and you're going to reel it like six or seven times and let it hit the bottom and reel it like six or seven times, let it hit the bottom. You're just bouncing it. You're just bringing that thing up like that and bringing that thing up like that, bouncing it off the bottoms. Um, sometimes it's just like a, a straight burn, just like really, really, really fast, as fast as I can. But I'll encourage you guys to just get on there and do your research on the internet. There's some people that have made some good videos about about how to how to like work these jigs. There's one person that just went through the exact methods of how they, they with a rod tip, they do like a pop pop thing and a pop pop thing. And there's just, you know, come up with your own way, man. Just like fish it a lot of different ways until you figure out what's gonna work in the area where you're fishing. Like I have one area where I fish by a bridge and I'm on the seawall and, and the bridge is like really close and I cast this thing as far as I can cast it along the bridge but the current is running back under the bridge and I can't let that thing go for too long because I'll end up wrapped up in the pilings. So I really, I'm casting it out there and I'm just reeling it fast. I'm just like reeling it and let it hit the bottom. Reel it. I reel it about 10 times, let it hit the bottom. Reel it about 10 times, let it hit the bottom. And I just don't want it to get hung up in the pilings and the snook in that area, well, they'll just slam it there. And then I have other places where I fish with these things and it's just like a like a one bounce on the bottom just boom and then i just reel it like once and it's like boom and i reel it once and it's just boom 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 and i'm letting that thing just bounce on the bottom so um yeah sometimes along the bridge shadows i'll just burn this thing along the bridge shadows like really fast and and get a reaction strike so the snook will hit these things you just work them in a lot of different ways figure out how they want it and the place that you're fishing and one you know you got to pay attention to how you're working that that lure a lot of times with my videos, like I'll catch a fish and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot how I was like working the lure at that time that he hit it. And I'll look back at the video footage and I'll actually see. So, all right guys, so that that's it. I'm using a, like a 6,000 spinning reel, a seven and a half to eight foot long rod. My other snook rod is the seven foot rod. Then I've got another one that's seven and a half foot. Um, 30 to 50 pounds. Some people even use, a, use heavier braid line than that. And I'm using an 80 pound leader. I have a friend of mine that uses, I think like up to 120 pound or something leader. He fishes for some really, really monster sized snook in some areas where there are a monster sized snook. So, but I found 80 pound works pretty good for me. The biggest snook of my life, I didn't have my camera with me. And uh, yeah, wore through 80 pound leader right in front of me. And yeah, that night I was wishing I would have had about a hundred pound test on there to land that one, but it was kind of discouraging because I didn't have my video with me. So you're gonna find snook around bridges and rocks and structure and places where the current is ripping, where there's straight drop off areas along the edges of flats. They're waiting for bait to come by around points and drop offs at the beach. And just, you're gonna find snook hanging out in places where they can ambush prey, where they can like hang out in the current and wait for the bait to come by them. Sometimes they'll get off kind of in a little slack area, but the current will be ripping in front of them and uh, they'll shoot out and grab that bait, definitely around lights and shadows. So make sure that you check out my video where I go through like a ton of different snook fishing tips and I actually talk 
even more in depth about locations and places where you're going to find snook hanging out in. But anyway, guys, so that's pretty much it. Like, I don't know what else to tell you, but thanks for watching this video and thumbs up or appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and everybody click that bell icon. You guys upload videos all the time. Get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun. You got to live it. See ya.